I want you to notice the features that make it what it is. It's a sine graph. We know what sine looks like. But it can change in two ways. What are the two changes? How would you verbalize what's changing? What was this change? Yeah. Starts with an F. Starts with an F. This changes the frequency. If I wanted to change the amplitude, how would I change it? I would put it out the front over here, or because amplitude is an up down thing, I would put a number dividing or multiplying this. Agree? Because Y is an up and down thing. It's vertical. So that changes the frequency. Is it more frequent or less frequent? More frequent. It's more frequent, that means from 0 to 360, I'm going to get two full copies of this thing, not just one. Okay? So far, so good. We know there's a frequency change. What's the other change? What's the word? It's a horizontal shift, which because it's um, a trig function, we also have a special fancy name for this horizontal shift. We also call it a phase shift. Okay? So there's a phase shift, there's a frequency change, but here's the trick. These two interact with each other in a way that maybe is a little bit surprising. Let me show you how. I'm going to graph this two different ways. I will end up in the same graph both ways, but I'm going to show you two different methods for approaching it. Okay? So the first thing I want you to do is, can you just draw a regular side graph for me? Just draw me a regular one from 0 to 360. Regular side graph. Now, here's our regular sine curve. I've drawn, to, drawn it from 0 to 360. And the reason why 360 is such a common, 0 to 360 is such a common domain to choose is because that means, ta-da, you get to the end of the period. This is also called one full cycle of the graph. Okay? Yes? The most, the most recent file you should find is like one A4 page. Yeah? You see? Yeah? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So here we go. It looks beautiful. Uh, I've got my intercepts in there. Whoops, I need this one. Um, I've got my amplitude. We already discussed that that's not going to change in this question. So, so far, so good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the modifications that are in here one at a time. But I'm going to do them in different orders. You'll see what I mean. Let's do the phase shift first. 90 degrees, in what direction? To the right. To the right. Okay, we know it's a bit funny. You've got to get used to reading this backwards. So see how this first intercept used to be at zero. Well now, let's put 360 in here and 180 in there. Where you begin is going to be here, actually. You see it's been moved 90 degrees to the right. Okay, so far so good. Um, when I think about this turning point up here, that usually occurs at 90 degrees. But in fact, I have shifted it 90 degrees to the right. So now it's at 180. Okay, and then you can fill in the rest of it. Okay, so let's just quickly do that. So this is the shape that you have. What do you think? Are you comfortable with it? Does it look good? Uh, my station, my turning point down here needs a bit of work. Let's fix that a little more. There we go. A bit flat. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, by the way, just before we leave off, we should, um, because we're using all these different support graphs to get to this one, I'm going to label all of them. It's always important to label, but at, this, at least this way I'll know exactly which one is which. This is y equals sine of x minus 90. All I've done is the phase shift. By the way, that's not the only way you could label this graph. What does it look like? If I didn't tell you this, what would you say that looked like? Doesn't it look like an upside down cos? It is an upside down cos. So just as a side note, you might as well note that is also equal to negative cos x. Hmm. That's unusual, but it is true. Uh, you can come back to that identity later on. Right, I did my phase shift. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to forget that this guy exists. I'm going to start with this, and then I'm going to apply the frequency change, right? So see how that's one full copy? Well, from 0 to 360 now, 
I'm going to get two copies of this guy. Does that make sense? Okay, now think carefully for a moment. This means that from uh, a period that used to be 360 degrees, the new period is 180. Now, wait a second. And this is the critical point, and this is the counterintuitive bit. If you've taken this whole graph and you've squeezed it in so it takes half the horizontal width now, right? What were the intercepts, the x intercepts, for this graph? What were they? Just look at the graph. They're 90 and 270. But we've just been saying that everything on the graph is going to compress to half the space. So they will not be at 90 and 270 anymore. This one is going to get squashed into 45. And this one will get squashed into 135. Yes? So over here, hey sir, which what? Oh, this. This? Then we're just like, oh, I'll just take this one. <laughs> this in here, I'm going to put my 90 degrees in there so that I can get my scales right. That means this is 45 and this is 135. Yes? So here's the shape of it. Uh, it looks like this, I guess. Oh, I missed, but you get the idea. Okay, now that's one copy, and because it's periodic, I just have to redraw the thing. Um, these roots at 45 and 135, I'm going to get new copies over here at, seems to me, 225 and 315, okay? Um, because the roots used to be every 180, but now they're every squeezed in double every 90 degrees. So that takes us 225 and 315, and then you finish. Okay, this is the graph. This is sine 2x minus 90 degrees. Now I want you to take off your student hat for a moment, and I want you to put on your teacher hat, your marker's hat, okay? Now that you know this is what the graph is supposed to look like, what do you think is the most common error students make when they see this and fail to graph this? What do you think they graph instead? Have a think. What do you reckon, John? Um, they Okay, so you're talking about, uh, wait, when you say vertical axis, you mean this one? Yeah. So you mean like move the shape up? Okay. You do find some students who move the shape up because they confuse which direction they're shifting in. They're like, I know there's a shift, but I don't know which way, and so they confuse that. That does happen, but not as often as when students look at this number. And they say, I know what that means. It means I'm going to shift to the right 90 degrees. So they say their first intercept is going to be at 90 degrees. But it's not. It's not at 90 degrees. It doesn't shift 90. Actually, it's shifted 45. Do you see why it's 45 though? What was it about this interaction that made it 45? Do you remember? It was the halving, wasn't it? It was the squeezing in, right? So this guy doesn't just sort of operate on his own. He actually has to play ball with this guy, and that's confusing to students. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do now. I said to you, I'm going to graph it in two different ways. Students often get confused. They say, well, how am I supposed to remember to do the phase, the horizontal shift first, and then do the frequency change? How am I supposed to remember which one comes first? Because if you do this, squeeze it in, and then move it 90 degrees, you're wrong. You get the wrong graph. Let me show you how to do it. So now, parallel to these, I'm going to draw two more sets of axes to get to the same graph. In the first instance, I phase shifted and then I changed the frequency. This time, let's change the frequency first. So instead of graphing that, I'm going to graph y equals sine 2x. Okay? This is not too hard. It's the original graph, but two copies from 0 to 360. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and draw those two copies. What do you think? All right, you happy with that? Except that that would normally be 720, but I've squashed everything in, so this is 360. I'm going to have to put the rest of the roots in, though. That's important. 90, 180, 
two seven. So far, so good. There's the frequency check. Okay. But and here's the key, right? I'm actually going to put this on in a new color. Um, when you go to oh man, I really did. I left my green in the other room. When I move from this guy, which looks like this, to the new one, that 90 degree shift, it actually has to get shared across both X's. Let me say that again. Okay? You shift 90 degrees to the right, okay? but it's like there are two X's there that both need to be shifted. Right? So each one only gets individually shifted 45. Here's how I write it. This is sine of two lots of x, right? In order to shift that x, I'm actually shifting at 45 degrees because look, if the x is getting doubled, so is the shift. Do you see that? Okay. So when you see it in its original form like this, that, that actual shift, the real shift is disguised, right? How much is x being changed? It's really being changed by 45 degrees, right? Up here, it looks like it's 90, but there are two x's in here that both need to be changed. So that 90 degrees, as it were, is shared across both of them, right? By the same token, if I change the question, if I made this, say, 3x minus 90 degrees, how much is the actual shift going to be? 30 degrees. If I made it 6x minus 90, it would only go 15 degrees and whatever it might happen to be because these two things interact with each other. So now that I've got this on here, how do I get to the actual graph that I need? I'm going to shift to the right, 45. So uh, what have I got here? I said that this was 90 and this was 0, right? So now I'm going to start the 0 at 45, and then this one moves forward to 135, and then this one moves forward to 225, and so on, right? And then I just complete. There's that orange part that's been moved to the right, 45 degrees, just like you told me to. And then I need an extra bit over here to fill in the gap. Which, as a relief, looks exactly like what we got the other way. It doesn't actually matter which one you do first, so long as you know how to do each one in the right order. 